excited today. We are going backstage with the chips. Where's Daddy going? The rugby, Dabba. The rugby's that way, is it? Mm -hmm. So I've arrived at the ground and I'm just going to go and try and find Mark, who's the guy that's got me the backstage access, the com comms manager here at the Chiefs. Um, and yeah, special day. <laughs> Ali here for one of the coaches just turning up now. Some hardcore fans waiting for autographs. Half eleven. That is going some. So this is a televised game today on BT Sport live. <laughs> Stewards briefing. So visiting and our seats over there. Main man's box. So here's a different view of the pitch. Whoa! That's amazing. Best view in the house. Yeah. Ones are wide. And then I'll have various other cameras to do. These steps only, they go up 20 minutes before the game, so they are literally locked up there for the whole game. Well, half time, I presume. No, no, half time they stay Half time they stay out there as well. Austin Healy, Ben K. Ben K. And Alistair Eakin. And Alistair Eakin, and they'll be commentating from this box here. What's the software that runs it? Piero. Piero. Piero, yeah, it's like a sports analysis software. Markers and stuff. This is what you see on the screen when they're yeah when they're doing it yeah doing it yeah and we kind of we're here to kind of make it all fit. I'll record it and then I'll call down to the director and then we'll wait for break and play and then we'll play it. So you've got every single player here and every single stat, um, all the kind of team stuff like line outs won, line outs lost, um, every player you've got like meters made, offloads, tackles. Um, missed tackles, like every single stat, so absolutely amazing. This is how these guys know so much as the uh, um, as the uh, as the people are sort of commentating on TV. It's unbelievable. I've often wondered how they know this much stuff. Amazing. So this is one of the uh, Chiefs' training areas. This is where Chiefs become Chiefs. Ref's room. Thirty thousand pounds on tape every year. Embedded in there, so we can track all their running. GPS unit. Heart rate monitor. And a heart rate monitor. So they wear that on. Training and in matches. Do they wear, where, where does that go? Like around their Across chest? Across their chest, yeah. Okay. And here they've got all their training kit. They'll have drinks with salts in them. And then like a energy drink. Sweets! Yeah, uh, <laughs> Henry Slade has a pop to himself because he's diabetic. Beetroot juice. Crazy Red Bull. Different size studs depending on the uh, conditions here as well. To make sure they don't slip over. So the guys actually weigh themselves before and after the game and then whatever they've lost they have to replace in fluids. So uh, that could be quite a lot of water. So this screen will be used for kind of looking at the game during half time. The Robs will go through and tell the players what they're doing well and what they're doing not so well. Changing room cam. I'm sure that's uh, turned off at some point. No, it's live all the time. Oh, it's live, about is it? an hour before. So come and grab a seat, any of the benches. Please don't sit on anyone's kit. This is the Exeter Chiefs dressing room as it is all set up for a match day. You'll notice that there's wooden plaques all along with a black name board stuck onto them. Depending on what colour the player's name is written in, depends on how many appearances they've made for the club. So if they've made 0 to 49 appearances, their name's written in white. If it's 50 to 99, their name's written in bronze. If it's 100 to 149, their name's written in silver. And if it's 150 or more, their name's written in gold. Also, on some of the plaques in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll notice that there's a flag. That flag means that that player has got international cap for that country. Ice bath. So what sort of temperature is that at then? Uh, it's about eight degrees now. It used to be three, so it takes your breath away. Oh yeah, that is cold. So they'll jump in there, stand up, do like three minutes, jump in the shower, and do that two or three times. <laughs> Yeah. 
weights room and gym they're lifting pretty much the same sort of weights that I, I would uh, typically lift right so here we've got the extra cheese leaderboard for um, all the various weights and speeds I guess that is on certain things is that on um, rowers and yeah, yeah. Bikes, yeah rowers and what bikes check this out So this board's for the all-time records. Mark was just saying that Ed Holmes here, who's done 2,438 watts on the watt bike, is similar to kind of Chris Hoy and professional cyclists. Crazy. Those are dumbbells. Here we go then now. All right, giving it some. This is like a spray deck for a canoe. Oh, okay, yeah. To get in there, it weighs you. Yeah. And once you've been weighed, you can then change the diamet settings to how much body force you put through. So you can almost be like running on air. So you can have 100% body force or 5%. So in the case of Slady, when he broke his leg, we had him back running pretty sharpish after. Yeah. Uh, but there was no force going through his leg. So he's doing cardio and still running technique, but with no force going through. So this is the player's lounge. You might recognise this from TV where Jack Noel got found out he was going to the Lions tour. I think he was sitting somewhere over here. So Mark was just saying that um, the guys that don't get picked have to basically mimic the other team throughout the week. So, and they literally copy everything. So even if someone went down to do a shoelace, for example, one of our guys might do that in the week because it could be um, a little bit of a trigger for the line out calls or something like that. So amazing behind the scenes. This is what's called a deso pitch, this. We've got fibres in here, we've got like woven in with the actual grass itself, which is pretty incredible. And at the end of every season, this, uh, the deso machine comes in, it takes away all the dead grass and replaces it uh, afterwards and put, they put sand on it and stuff like that. So it's incredible what goes into this. So part of this here is It's fibre. plastic grass. It's plastic? Yeah. Woven in with normal yeah. grass? So it's the same as what Twickenham's got, a lot of Premiership football. If you were to do a slight tackle on here now, you won't get the old divots like you used to. Right. You know, like in olden days? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't chew up, it so actually holds it all together. Designated press area this is. Sitting. This is basically the best seat in the house. So this is where our coaches will be sitting here, and that's where I'll be sitting. <laughs> this is my view. So I probably should have explained what I'm doing here today. Basically, I did uh, a game for Stino, you might have seen it, a testimonial game. Um, Chiefs loved it, and Tony Rowe liked it and I got invited back to do a live Premiership game. So uh, I'm here for the Harlequins versus the Chiefs today. And yeah, it's going to be a massively, uh, it's going to be an epic game. Very hard fought, I reckon. Harlequins are doing well as well. So um, let's see how it goes. But yeah, vlogging from the game behind the scenes and I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, they've given me some amazing access to show you some of the stuff that maybe you don't normally get to see. Right, they're going to be doing some press pre-game uh, interviews now, which they're going to show me. Just so you know, the interview coming your way. Rob, with Saracens having lost on Friday and then you facing them next weekend up at Allianz Park, the scene is set for Exeter to show a ruthless streak. Is that a message you're sending to your players? Um, a little bit. I think it's a, a little bit more about just being aware that this is a dangerous round of the competition. It's so noticeable with Exeter Chiefs. It's a team that learns. You lose a Premiership final, you win a Premiership final the following year. I should get to see a real life interviews him. He's a guy who's straight out of BT. Right, here come some of the Quinns players. now is half past one. Quinns have just turned up to give you an idea so they turn up about 
an hour and a half or so before the game. The Chiefs players will have been here for probably another half an hour, an hour maybe. They were in the changing rooms at the moment. And um, yeah, they'll just be getting ready, maybe having a bit of lunch, I guess, and before they start training uh, and getting out on the pitch and doing their warm up and stuff. So gives you a bit of an idea about the time scales of today. I thought they'd be here a lot earlier than they actually are, so. Um, but I guess there's no point just waiting around, is there? There's a number of bars here at the Chiefs. Here's the members bar and the supporters bar as well, uh, which is called like a gold card um, bar, which I'll take you into now. People are having dinner before the game and uh, people can drink here as well. Uh, you usually get here a few hours before, so it's the gold card bar. the official compare of the Exeter Chiefs, about to start his duties in literally 10 minutes. Right, so this BT Sports cameraman, apparently he's one of the, the most famous BT Sports cameramen, and uh, he goes to all the games and he wears a sock from one of each of the teams, as you can just about to see there. Hopefully you can see one Harlequins and one uh, Chiefs sock there. Amazing. Probably banter as well. Right, let's see if we can get Gary. Practicing his kicks. I've never really noticed this before, but this side of the ground, which is not the West Grandstand, fills up so much quicker than that. Check out all the people that are here. Now check out the West Grandstand. see what's going on as well so yeah it's quite interesting just seeing that actually to be honest Filmingo with this big one to the 
Chiefs, 17 to Quinns. Hmm. Tight. Jack doing his duties for TV. <laughs> Them, and I think you saw that in the performance and uh, never gave up. Um, and yeah, disappointed we didn't get something out of it. Ali Heifer now for Chiefs. Oh, yeah, that was a great game to watch. How was it from a patient's perspective? Uh, not great to watch. Um, <laughs> No, look, we, we're a little bit disappointed with our performance levels, but we can understand it as well. You know, a couple of weeks, we've had some good training weeks. We've, had, we've rested the guys up as well, um, but you can't beat match minutes. Chiefs always doing their bit. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, at least nine of them here doing autographs, which is so good to see from fans. This is the media team. Feel who you met. We've got Barry, Mark Hedepon, and then another Mark who does the podcast. So these are the guys that make the media happen. Yeah, when we come in before the game, the chop starts up, and yeah, you're, run, you're running in, and yeah, you get goosebumps. Um, you know, we've got fans who, who turn up every week and uh, send us Christmas gifts, or you know, walk 100 metres from their car inside just to say good day and just laugh. And, um, you know, it's a really special place with a really passionate supporter base. Um, we're, we're lucky, we're fortunate, and we were trying to try pay that. And I think the more we try and pay that, the, the better our fans are. Sorry. Only a weekend of celebrations, birthday yesterday, man of the match today, five points for the Chiefs, not a bad place to be. Yeah, Sunday night, I'm going to have a few drinks and enjoy things like that. Teams are there to shoot at you now, you, you know, you, they want to they come after you, you're the champions. Yeah, every game we've got, um, we've got to bring our best, uh, best rugby, because every team wants to beat uh, the champions, every team wants to beat all the guys on top of the leaderboard, so we can't rest, we can't have weeks off. Alistair's been here vlogging today, so I want to hear about that in a second, but let, let's talk about the game. I saw Jack Noel doing BT Sport at half-time, did you see him hair looking I lush? Did. Yes, indeed, doesn't he always? It's all that fish and chicken that he <laughs> eats, and we roll on to next week. Chiefs top of the league, nice place to be tonight uh, as they go to Saracens at Allianz Park next week. Good luck to the boys. That's the game over, guys. Um, absolutely, massively enjoyed it. Thank you so much to Mark Stevens and the gang at the meeting, the media team, Flo as well, um, for letting me do this. It's just been unbelievable. So from half 11 today till, uh, where are we now? Almost six o'clock. Uh, it's a different side of the game. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've seen like the backstage access and hopefully I'll get a chance to do another one at some point. Over and out.